Hearts of a bite, no reora in the order. Yes, who is a no? Yes, I'd come up so such has got a good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together. We do this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are a couple weeks away from the transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ, which we celebrated. And we're a couple weeks away from the next major feast day, which is the Assumption of the Holy Mother of God, Astvazazin. In preparation for that, we see that there's a few different passages that our church fathers have asked us to look at. Let's look at the one that talks for today. It comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19. And it is an interesting one because it might not pertain to everybody, but I'll show you how it does, okay? It says, the Pharisees came to Jesus to test him. Now, the Pharisees were very smart people. They read the Bible. They knew scripture backwards, forwards. They had all kinds of things, but they weren't able to practice it. And so Jesus was always at odds with them, and he was always pointing out to them. So a lot of times because of that, we think that the Pharisees are the bad guys. They're not the bad guys. They were actually the good guys. They were the people who knew religion, who felt that they had faith. They had some problems there, in, in especially in this story we're seeing that they're going to come up to Jesus trying to test him because they want to find what the faults are in Jesus. And so they came up to him to test him and they asked, is it lawful to divorce one's wife for any cause? Jesus answered, have you not read that he who made them in the beginning made them male and female and said, for this reason shall... A man leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let no, no man ever separate. So what Jesus does is he turns it around. And he says, wait a minute, what are you talking about divorce? This is what the law is. A man and a woman should be together. Very easy. So now the Pharisees come and they hit him up even harder. They say, well, if this is the case, Jesus, why then did Moses command one, of, one to give a certificate of divorce and to put her away? In other words, why did Moses allow for divorce? And Jesus, again, is quick to turn around. He said he did that because of the hardness of your heart. Now, let's talk about some realities in life. We know that in this world right now, I think the percentage is right around 50%. For every, for, for every uh, two weddings, one wedding, one marriage ends in a divorce. So divorce is a very real subject. A lot of times couples come to me and when we talk about this in premarital counseling, I will turn to them and say that, you know, I want to talk to you about divorce. And they'll say, no, 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 no. We're never going to get divorced. Well, let me tell you something. I don't think that there's anybody who ever goes into marriage thinking that it'll end in divorce. Okay? Nobody says, hey, I think I'll, I'm going to start off this marriage and it'll end in divorce. No, nobody thinks that. But it does happen, right? We're talking about a 50% rate. That means every two marriages, one ends in divorce. So it's a reality. And for us to close our eyes or to be like ostriches and put our head in the sand and say it doesn't exist is wrong. No, there are, there are circumstances where these things happen. These things happen. Divorce happens. And we see it all around us. In fact, today, it's very likely that many of our families, and not only very likely, it's, it's probable, it is, it is reality that in our families there are so many people that are divorced. So now, what, do we, what does this mean? Does this mean we're bad Christians? Does it mean we're bad people? No, what it does mean is that we are people. See, difference. We are people. No judgment on it. It means that we are human and we have faults. Now, What's wrong is when we don't want to work on our faults. So if you realize that you're a human being and you have those faults, you need to start working on them and say, hey, like Jesus says, be perfect like your heavenly Father. Okay, how can I improve myself? 
And sometimes in marriages, tragically, we see that they end in divorce and people uh, are on uh, two different sides and sometimes tragically, we see that the children are hurt too. But it doesn't mean that life has to end there. And this is why Jesus says, these laws were given because of the hardness of your heart. You need to open those hearts. And so as Christians today, we're called to open our hearts to the love of God. We have opportunities to build even where life has been destroyed. Now, just about a week ago, the Olympics started on the world stage. You've probably been watching and seeing some good things, some bad things taking place in the Olympics. Do you realize that each one of those athletes that is competing, they go to the Olympics with hopes of winning. Every athlete goes to the Olympic thinking that they are going to win. Maybe not their goal, but they'll say, hey, I'm going to come in someplace. And you know what? For the most part, they don't. Some of them don't end it, right? I mean, obviously, if there's like 20 people competing in one race, there's only going to be three winners. There's going to be a gold, a silver, and a bronze. The rest aren't going to make it. So where is the majority? The majority aren't going to make it. Does that stop them from living? Does that stop them from racing? Sure, there's a lot of disappointment in life. And you're seeing it unfold during the Olympics, especially you look at everybody and all the races and everything, but that doesn't stop them from enjoying and competing in what is called the race or is what is the competition. And so too in life, it's not about the goal only. It's about the race. It's about the walk. It's about going through life and opening our hearts, opening ourselves to one another. Jesus said, because of the hardness of your heart, these laws have been there. So can we soften our hearts? Can we understand that in life we need to have compassion? Does it mean that, yes, there are difficulties in life and we'll get through those difficulties. But if I have been slapped around in life, I guess the wrong thing would be if I did not learn from that. Remember, there's an old saying that says, if you hurt me, shame on you. But if you hurt me a second time, shame on me. In other words, I have to have learned from that first time. And if you don't learn, then yeah, shame on you. You have opportunities to learn. You have opportunities to be human. The Christian is not perfect, but the Christian is forgiven. The Christian has an opportunity to start again, to evaluate, to look at life and say that, you know what? I'm going to improve on my life. I'm going to make a better life for myself and for my family. In today's passage, it's a, fa it's, a, it's a passage about family. It's about divorce. It's about an uncomfortable subject. But at the same time, it's also an opportunity for every one of us to look at it and say that, you know what? It may not have been a divorce with a wife, with a husband that I went through, but I went through a divorce with my family. I went through a divorce with my work. I went through a divorce in different terms. Perhaps the athlete who doesn't make it in the competition, that's a divorce of a, of a nature too, right? Does that mean that life has to end there? No. What it means is that there is an opportunity to improve. Now think about it in these terms too. In the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at the Holy Mother of God, Saint Mary. And you think about him and you say, well, how could you call somebody a mother of God? How could you call somebody a saint? Does that mean that they're God? No, just the opposite. It means that they're people. It means there are people like you and me, but they have risen to the occasion. Next week when we gather together, when we come together, we'll be talking about saints. And this is one of the most misunderstood topics in our church because people think that the saints, we put, put the saints up on a pedestal and these are like God. No, there is only one God and we worship God alone. We do not worship saints. But in a saint, we have an opportunity to see ourselves, to see us human beings, with all of our frailties, with all of our weaknesses, with all of our problems, reaching out and arriving. As Jesus said, be perfect like your heavenly Father. In other words, God gives us an opportunity. He gives us an opportunity to be perfect, 
It is not impossible. It may be difficult, and I'm there to tell you, it's very difficult to attain that perfection in different traditions. People call it different uh, things, but you know that that you know that that mark is out there. This is the idea of sin. You have missed the mark, but it's fun to try it, to try to reach that mark, and that's part of life. That's the beauty of life, that we have an opportunity to reach out to one another, to share with one another. And sometimes it is very difficult. Sometimes there is divorce. There is very painful things in life. It makes us cry. It makes us frustrated. It makes us angry. But God is giving us the strength, giving us the determination to say that, you know what, give it a shot. Because I know you have the capacity to love. I know that that heart doesn't need to be hard. hard. It needs to be a softened heart where there is compassion and there is love. Give it a try this week. I know you can do it. I know each of us can do it. We have this beautiful opportunity because Christ has called us to be a member of his family. Get involved in your church where you could articulate as a member of the family. Get involved in your church if you want to get involved in me. Hey, you'll find me at epostle.net. That's apostle with an E, apostolic evangelism for an electronic and expanding universe. Till next week, let's do this and give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.